So in a previous video, I talked about using a 5600G as a placeholder for a graphics card until the graphics card you wanted either became available or it came down to a reasonable price. So I spent the last week working on a 5600G to show you how it will perform in video editing, gaming, and just everyday use cases. So a little bit of backstory before we get into the video here. I was actually using a 10850K along with an RTX 3060 right up until I tried to do a BIOS update to get Windows 11 support that broke my motherboard. Now, thankfully I was able to get it RMA'd from MSI. It just took a really long time. So I thought, what a better chance than to actually use the 5600G, put it through its paces while I waited three weeks to get my motherboard back. So all the comparisons I'm doing, just keep in mind it's coming from a much stronger system, but the RTX 3060 has remained on the shelf and as you see right here, the 5600G is what we're using to actually edit this video as well as do all the gaming benchmarks. There is no graphics card here. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into it. So for daily purposes, if you're just watching YouTube videos, streaming media, stuff like that, the CPU is actually great. Of course, the 5600G is basically a, a 5600X. It does have six cores and 12 threads. Of course, the 5600X does have a lower boost frequency, but it does have double the L3 cache, as well as support for PCIe 4.0. And while 5600X will benchmark better than the 5600G, you won't really notice the performance gap inside of a gaming PC. So getting a 5600G instead of a 5600X for a gaming PC, still a very viable solution. Then of course, the 5600G does have integrated graphics. It does have seven cores available to it, as well as two gigs of VRAM by default. And keep in mind, I do say by default because you can allocate some of your system memory to give more VRAM to the actual 5600G. So I ran all the benchmarks you're gonna see with two gigs of VRAM, as well as four gigs of VRAM. But other than that, stock configuration throughout. And if you wanna see how to allocate more VRAM to the 5600G, make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll make a dedicated video about that if there's enough interest. All right, so starting off with the synthetic benchmarks, we ran Cinebench R23, and we got a single threaded score of 1432 and a multi-threaded score of 11,244. And as you can see, there's no real change in the two gig versus the four gigs of VRAM because this is a CPU benchmark. As a matter of fact, using the four gig, the scores actually went down slightly. And this could be explained because there's just not as much available system memory to be able to perform the tests. And we see this again in the superposition benchmarks where you get a score pretty much the same between the two gig and the four gig VRAM. And I think this is actually because you're running into the actual core limitation on the integrated graphics versus anything else here. So it's not to say that giving it more VRAM is useless. It's just there are some applications where more VRAM is needed and is, actually helps. And there will be some applications where it doesn't help. So taking a look at the esports titles for gaming benchmarks, we benchmarked CSGO, Valorant, and Fortnite. And as you can see, CSGO and Valorant, uh, with the two gig and the four gig variants, both ran over 100 FPS. And then taking a look at Fortnite, it came in at two gigs at 89 FPS, but was able with the extra two gigs of VRAM during the four gigabyte test to actually come in over the 100 FPS threshold. Now keep in mind, you are seeing a dip with Valorant and CSGO at the four gig, but keep in mind those are changes in maps, player settings, things of that nature that can't really be controlled because they don't have synthetic benchmarks. So that could have just been a change in the maps and, and the style of play versus anything versus the two gig versus four gig VRAM buffer. Now jumping into the harder to play titles, you do have Apex Legends, uh, Call of Duty Warzone and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now each of these at 1080p low settings failed to hit the 60 FPS threshold. Now with something like Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 30 FPS, while it does kind of feel like a console experience, since it's not a quick paced game, you probably get away with actually running it at 30 FPS. As far as Apex Legends and Warzone, they were playable, but certainly not an enjoyable experience. While there wasn't any stuttering or anything of that nature, it was just slower paced and harder to hit targets at that point being under 60 FPS. Now I did benchmark Warzone at 720p low settings and was able to actually hit 60 FPS. So there is that hope that you could actually just bump down the resolution if you did wanna play those titles and still be able to have a very enjoyable experience. So as you can see in gaming, the two gigs versus the four gigs doesn't always make much of a difference. Uh, I would actually say go ahead and allocate the four gigs of RAM because applications that can take advantage of it, the ones that haven't hit the core limitations on the 5600G integrated graphics, they will perform better for you. And one place I can actually show you is in video editing. So I tried to edit a small 4K clip and using the two gigs of VRAM, it was just a very frustrating experience. The playback was not smooth. It was very hard to edit. And what was a 30 second clip that should have been done quickly actually took a whole lot of time to edit because it was basically skipping through the playback and having to make precision cuts is just difficult when that's happening. 
As far as render times, it also took that same clip about a minute and a half to actually render, where adding four gigs of VRAM almost completely got rid of the issues with 4K video editing as far as the playback and dropped the render times to under one minute. Now, as for editing 1080p video, this video is gonna be edited if only there was a way that I could show you how much a difference it would make. Hey, so Pinky Editor here, the real talent behind the channel. So I've been doing the editing of this video with the 5600G integrated graphics and 1080p video editing with the four gigs of VRAM has been absolutely fine. So I'm gonna get back to my day, but wanted to let you guys know how it was going. And, and I gotta try to make this bum look a little bit better. You know, cut out all the times he stumbles over his words. And so in conclusion, the 5600G is good enough to get you by while you're waiting on a new GPU to come into inventory. And at $230 or $200 to $230, depending on sales going on, it's actually probably a better option than using uh, something like a 10400F and a GT710. Now, if you can wait or you can afford a, a dedicated graphics card, something like a GTX 960, and you're okay wasting the $150, it is ultimately going to give you a better playing experience because quite frankly, it's just got a lot more processing power for cores. Uh, it doesn't really have as much or, you know, difference in VRAM, but certainly the processing power from a dedicated GPU is going to be any integrated graphics card that you can look at. Now, if you're looking for something older, like the 3400G, I'd recommend my friend GTEx uh, video that he just recently done with Benchmarks. And if you're looking for maybe something current gen, but a little bit more processing power, there is the 5700G and my buddy over at PC Tech Hustle has actually just done a video on that as well. So I'll leave links in the description below so you can check out those videos on there. And as always guys, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.